over time we've seen a change in the number of fish and the species of fish that are being brought in. For instance, Pompano was a very big industry in October and November every year. The shrimp boats would bring them in literally by the tons of Pompano. And now it's a rare occasion to catch Pompano off the beaches and the shrimp boats don't bring any in at all. Now, other fish that you've seen that we used to see uh, were Spanish mackerel, uh, some black drum, but you don't get those species in as much in the last 20 years as we did 30, 40 years ago. Well, some of the species we're getting now that we used to not get in abundance or they weren't marketable were like triggerfish. Triggerfish used to be thought of as a, a so-called trash fish because people didn't want to go and fish for it. But now with the changing of what people are bringing in, the amount of fish they're bringing in, triggerfish has become a very viable fish. It's very marketable. It, I'd equate it along to grouper. Grouper and triggerfish are both firm, white meat, delicate white meat fish. And so when we can't get the grouper in, but we can get the trigger, people will take it and substitute it. We are seeing changes in the availability. We're not getting in as much of the local shellfish as we used to. Therefore, we have to go out to neighboring states. We go to Florida, we go to Louisiana, we go to North Carolina. And they're able to bring in some of the extra shellfish that we don't have here. Some of the changes of bringing in the amount of shellfish might be to the air, excuse me, to the water temperature, it might be to the salinity. I'm not really sure what that is, but I know that oystermen that have been in the business for 30, 40, some of them even 50 years, tell me that the shellfish just aren't there. They aren't producing like they did 30, 40 years ago. We've given some thought to the changes in the salinity and the changes of levels because we're looking other places to see who's able to produce product that maybe it's not produced here. We're actually looking for different types of product. When I first got here in the 70s, this was a spot and croaker and flounder and whiting business. And now it's a trigger fish, it's a um, tuna, grouper, salmon, it's a different type of fish that we're bringing in. And sometimes it's not locally brought in because like I said, it has moved or is not caught, but we are looking to see what it's gonna take for us to be sustainable because we want to not take away anything that is not sustainable. So we worry about that. We worry about recycling oysters. We worry about them being able to reproduce enough oysters to keep up with the demand because the demand, especially in the Charleston area, has really skyrocketed for oysters. I mean, there's oyster roast and oyster, uh, excuse me, oyster roast all the time happening in Charleston. So just keeping up with that demand is a lot. The men say that their product is not there, that the species are there in limited quantities but they are concerned about it also. So they're looking at different places to make their money, different places to catch their fish, also different types of species. You know, for instance, the, uh, we talked about shellfish. Some of the men are looking at farming shellfish. You know, instead of just going out and getting a wild product, they're looking at actually going to a aquaculture for shellfish. They've been doing it for clams for a good, good many years now but they're looking at it for oysters. And we're hoping that if that's what it takes to keep the uh, sustainable oyster supply there, that aquaculture will work out. We talk to each other and try and keep up with what supply they're bringing in. Because if, if I've got extra supply of oysters coming from Louisiana, some of the guys that or competitors might need some. And same thing with them. They might have some extra Texas oysters in that I wasn't able to bring in myself. So we keep up. But as far as the sustainability and reliability, we really don't talk about that very much. There's been a lot of talk about people not being able to sustain their businesses on the creek, whether it's a restaurant or whether it's the retail seafood. And so there is concern about that because of the supply, because of the water being uh, on the rise. So yeah, there is concern, but um, 
I think that's going to be something I'll leave to my daughter to be most concerned about. The economy does affect us, and when it goes up, we're really riding high. Uh, when the people are not producing because of the storms or surges, and people are not buying because they have evacuated or stuff, so those do affect our business. They do, the storms that we've been having over the last month, six weeks, have very impacted our supply. Locally, we've had to reach out to other areas when the local is not being produced, such as shrimp. We go to North Carolina because they weren't hit as hard as us. Then we come back and get them from South Carolina when they rebound. Same thing with oysters. The oysters in Louisiana and Texas were inundated with water, so they weren't able to produce. So we had to go to North Carolina and Virginia to get oysters when those areas were closed down. So it does affect our business. Yeah, well, the trigger fish is one that has been really picked up on by the restaurants and by the walk-in retail customers. Uh, squid is another one. It was only a bait item 25, 35 years ago, but now squid's a big item. Same with octopus. Those items are really starting to pick up in the local area. Yeah, we've been aware of lionfish for several years because the divers that work out of here brought us samples of them. We've heard of them and we know about their invasive uh, way they do. Um, I think it's becoming something that people are starting to look at and that's a good thing. If other items aren't able to fill your uh, counter and fill your plate, then if you had lionfish to fill it in or if you had another invasive species, first of all, you'd be taking out the invasive species to manage it more because as we all understand, when the lionfish come in, other things disappear. And so you want to either eradicate them or keep them way under control so those other fish can maintain at the same time. So I think one like a lionfish to start hitting the retail counters and the uh, restaurant plates is a good idea. Well, I think that since tourism is the number one industry in our state, and especially in Charleston, you can see that, then the restaurants are very much benefited by the seafood being available here. And I think that benefits the men that go out and fix the uh, ice machines, the men that s service the trawlers with um, you know, their fuel and their ice, and also services the people that uh, go out and catch the fish itself, and catch the shrimp. And so it's a big part of the South Carolina, and especially the low country economy. We are concerned about overdevelopment and about disappearing seacoast. Uh, people talk all the time about the marshes going away. Well, I think the marshes have been very well protected, especially as of late. I think that they, we have to be aware that the Shrimp start off somewhere, and that's their nursery, is those marshes. The small fish move in. Grouper moves into the estuaries, into the marshes, and they have to have that nursery. And if you eliminate that, then you start eliminating species. So we are concerned about that. Right now, I see more and more people coming into the business because it is such a big part of the economy as far as shellfish, as far as shrimping, as far as offshore fishing, we are seeing new people come in. Some of the old people are still hanging around and they're teaching the ways to the young guys. So I think it's a good viable place to be because of everyone's worried about sustainable. And so they want it to be there for their children, their children's children. I think that the states work well together as far as uh, protecting the species. By that, I mean they go out and they test for the different fin fish, they test for the shellfish. But as far as retailers and our wholesalers working state to state, I don't think that they work together at all. I think that they're mostly after the, you know, their own control of what their product is. And as a retailer, you don't want to give away all your secrets of who your suppliers are and all. You want to protect the ones that you are your favorites, the ones that do the best job for you.